This VPT production is made possible by the Frank Taplin Fund, promoting local cultural arts and nature programming. Jacob Edgar has been a key figure on the world music scene as Putumayo's head of music research for years. Now his own independent record label is being showered with international praise. Jacob Edgar is my guest next on Profile. Jacob Edgar spent formative years in Plainfield, Vermont, after his family moved there from San Francisco when he was nine. At Oberlin College, he studied history and Latin American studies, but a love of travel and music had begun to find focus there. Upon graduation, he was awarded a Mellon Fellowship to pursue a master's in ethnomusicology from UCLA. He has been in the world music business ever since. In 1998, he became the music researcher for the compilation record company Putumayo World Music. There he has helped to produce more than 100 CDs that have sold over 10 million units. He also writes most of their liner notes and reviews for major publications. He moved back to Vermont in 2006 and started his own label, Kumbancha, which has already received stunning international acclaim. Jacob Edgar lives with his wife and two daughters in Charlotte. It's great to have you back in the state. Yeah, it's great to be here. <laughs> so, you know, how did that move from kind of swinging San Francisco um, when you were nine to a small town in Vermont in the 70s affect you and your family? Uh, well, at first I hated it, you know. I mean, I moved, I was sort of a cosmopolitan kid and I moved to, uh, the first place we lived was North Callis. I had to do the typical walking a mile through the snow to get to the school bus and uh, it took me a while before I started to really learn to love Vermont. But like so many kids who grow up here, eventually I did learn to love it. I'd learned to realize what a uh, special place it was to grow up. Mm. And so it took me some time, but eventually I really learned to appreciate and, and, it. And you were really active. You performed and traveled quite a bit when you were in high school. You uh, were with Project Harmony to the former Soviet Union, um, exchange student in Iceland. Yeah. You uh, played trumpet for Circus Smirkus. I mean, you, you really were, were very active. Was, was that stuff encouraged by your parents, or is it just was an inherent, you know, this well, travel Well, my bug? father, you know, my stepfather who raised me uh, uh, was a performing artist. He worked with Bread and Puppet, mm -hmm. which was one of our motivations for coming to Vermont, and also did his own theater stuff. Um, and my mother is also very creative. She was an artist. She was a potter, and she taught art at U32, which is the mm -hmm. high school I, I ended up uh, graduating from. And so there was a very creative environment mm -hmm. just growing up. And my dad was the kind of person who would say, hey, I'm doing a street performance. Come and play, be a part of it. You know, I mean, it was all very, uh, the act of performing and being involved with the arts was just sort of a natural element of growing up in that mm. family. So, yeah, it was very natural. So, so when was it clear that you wanted to focus on ethnomusicology rather than even performance or history or these other studies? Well, I didn't even know that there was such a thing as ethnomusicology until I was in college. And, uh, you know, it, it was one of those moments when I heard that this field existed. It was like this light bulb just went off in my head. I was like, oh my God, this takes the passion that I have for travel and learning about people from other cultures and, and my other passion for music and blends them into two, you know, blends these two elements into one uh, field of study and I knew instantly this is what I wanted to do. And so um, once I discovered that existed, I just pursued that route. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so um, you worked for, uh, right after you, you got your master's at UCLA or maybe before, you started working for a very small record label um, that was involved in world music. So when was it, how, how did you get connected with Putumayo? I, uh, you know, Putumayo was always the, sort of the elephant in the room of the world music world mm -hmm. because they were very successful at establishing a brand and, and uh, you know, as a smaller independent label, we were always trying to sort of find ways to knock them off the shelf, basically. <laughs> and uh, so I eventually met Dan Storper, who's the president and founder of Putumayo, at a music industry event in New Orleans. And I introduced myself. He'd heard about the work that I'd been doing with uh, the label that mm -hmm. I was working with at the time and really liked it, thought it was good mm -hmm. work. And so he, up until that point, had been doing the music research primarily himself for the compilations. 
but uh, the label had grown and the depth, you know, the, the music knowledge that he had wasn't really enough to sustain the label going forward. So he came up with this idea of inviting me to be the in-house music expert, basically. And, well, because uh, his, his stuff, he'd just gotten, he was collecting music to play at his clothing stores is how right. he began. Yeah, exactly. Right, That's so. how Putumayo started. I mean, Dan started as a, uh, with shops that were import handicraft and clothing stores. So he was a retailer, and uh, it wasn't until uh, you know, the company had existed for quite some time that he started playing music in the shops and um, discovered you know, that people were really reacting positively to world music mm. and asking, where can we get this stuff, and how do I find out more about it? And there was definitely a lack of information and knowledge and connection, and that's really what Putumayo is all about, mm. is about uh, providing a way for people to discover this incredible wealth of music we have out in the world. So how do you, what is the process for finding artists for, for Putumayo? Uh, well, you know, it's multi-tiered. There's, obviously we get sent a ton of material. So every day I probably get five, 10, 15 CDs or demos or whatever sent to me just cold. Um, I do a huge amount of traveling as well. So I'll go out four or five times a year for specific research trips. You know, let's say we're focusing on music from Turkey. I might go to Turkey and, and uh, when I'm in the country, I spend that time visiting record labels, visiting artists, going to concerts, just immersing myself in that world, talking with people who are experts in the music from that region. Um, and then I do a lot of, uh, you know, I go to special events like music festivals, I'll go to conferences where they have shows and performances, and I do a lot of work uh, research, online research, you know, checking out what's going on in the world. And are you looking for something traditional, something contemporary with an ethnic piece to it, or, or it, does it just depend on the theme of the, the CD, which it, they're all compilations. They well, I mean, the overriding artists. principle with Putumayo specifically, and to some extent Kumbancha, is that we're looking for universal music. And by that we mean music that you don't have to be from a particular place to appreciate it um, and find something in it that mm. will attract you. So, uh, you know, we're looking for those great songs, those incredible melodies, those things that you hear them, maybe you'll hear them playing in a store, you'll hear them playing on the radio or at a friend's house, and you'll say, it'll, it'll pique your interest. You'll say, ah, that sounds cool. What is that? What is that? And it, it's, the goal is basically to provide a doorway for people, an entryway for them to open into the wider world of music. I mean, you'll find music that is much more esoteric in, in many directions mm -hmm. than what you'll find on a normal Putumayo CD available out there in the world. But the goal is to allow people to not be afraid to mm -hmm. enter this world. And once they've entered it and started to learn more, they can open up to some of the stuff that's really either rootsy and traditional, very experimental, or you know, might be stylistically quite different than what we're used to listening to. Well, that kind of takes us to your next step. After seven or eight years of Putumayo, you were thinking of actually leaving Putumayo, but Dan would have nothing to do with that. Yeah, um, I mean, you know. How, what did they negotiate with you? Because you're still with them, and yet, you wanted to make your own label. Yeah, I, I mean, first of all, Putumayo had stopped. They had dabbled a little bit in working with individual artists and mm -hmm. production of individual artist CDs. But really, the model for Putumayo has been compilations. And that's how the whole structure of the company works. So I wanted to be more closely involved with some of the great artists that I've gotten to know over the years. I mean, I felt like there was all of these incredible people that I knew if the world knew about them, they would do well and they would mm -hmm. be successful. I wanted to be more involved hands-on with the production element of things. And I also wanted to have more creative control myself over what uh, mm. artistic direction to go in with the label. So I went to Dan and I said, you know, uh, I really want to leave Putumayo and start my own label. And Dan looked at me and he said, well, that's a great idea. I think it's great. You know, he was very, very supportive and he said, you know, I'll help you. I'll help you start it. I'll become an investor in the label and um, if you will continue to do the consulting work for Putumayo, um, if you will continue to help us research and develop these compilations. And for me, it was a win-win situation. I mean, I didn't want to leave the Putumayo family. I love it, and I love the work right. that I was doing there. So it enabled me to do that and to pursue the stream of starting my own label. So I have the best of both worlds. Well, many would say that uh, with the music industry in kind of its current disarray, to start a record label now is folly.